Hi, I'm Dr. Bonnie Clipper, the Chief Clinical Officer at WAMBI. Today, I'm here with Leanne Meyer, talk radio host of Once a Nurse, Always a Nurse, Exploring the World of Nursing on voiceamerica.com. We want to share a few moments of insight, gratitude, and inspiration with you. Leanne, thanks for taking the time to be with me today. You're more, more than welcome. I'm so thrilled to be able to do this. Thanks again. And what thoughts and insights can you share with our healthcare heroes and leaders at this difficult and challenging time? This is an incredible, amazing time in nursing history, and it will definitely go down in the books. Um, I, in my show, I interview a lot of different people from different backgrounds, and over the course of the last many weeks. Um, I've been talking to a lot of nurses from all over the country in small and large hospitals, and it has been both uh, overwhelming and inspiring. Uh, my most recent guest that I had on on this past Monday was Joe Tai, and he is a coach that uh, he works um, with a values coach, I had to think for a minute what it was, but he brought with him a book that he has recently updated, and the book is called uh, The Florence Prescription. Um, he reminded me, he brought home to me the legacy that Florence really has delivered to us and that we can learn a lot from. So I wanted to share a couple of paragraphs uh, from, uh, from her background, from the book, but about her background. So, um, it starts in uh, Scutari Barrack Hospital, uh, December 1854. The hour was at half past midnight. The lady with the lamp made her way slowly through corridors filled with wounded, sick, and dying soldiers, clear-headed and broken-hearted. The men were jammed together along the floors like too many plants packed into a row of beans. Their only mattress was a fetid and bloodied straw that was spread across the floors under them. The lucky ones had a blanket to themselves. We can do better than this, Florence Nightingale whispered into the foul air of the, of the Turkish uh, army barracks, fetid from the smells of the individuals there. The building had, almost as an afterthought, been converted into a hospital for British casualties of war against Russia in the far off Crimean Peninsula. I have to admit, it's probably been almost nursing school since I've really thought a lot about Florence Nightingale. But as her 200th birthday is approaching, I think all of us are starting to think a little bit more about her. And one more paragraph I wanted to finish with. Florence, her legacy was earned by her enormous contributions to the profession of nursing, the design and organization of hospitals to this day, her pioneering work for public health and epidemiology, statistics, and many other things that she uh, innovated. Her commitment to the care of soldiers, veterans, and their families. What occurred to me through the course of that interview was just how similar her obstacles, her uh, overwhelming difficulties that faced her, the um, reticence of the doctors that were already there at the Scutari Barracks, who literally called their their patients, their soldiers, um, uh, less than filled, and so thought very little of anything about them. Uh, the generals wanted nothing to do with her. They certainly didn't want her changing how things were doing, being done, but she stepped up despite all of it, brought, brought her little band of nurses with her, and she totally changed the whole situation, uh, creating um, cots, distanced from each other. Um, she had some of the nurses, especially male nurses, were scrubbing floors and keeping things clean, and they were uh, tasked with taking away urinals and, and uh, bedpans, etc. So she just totally transformed hospitals and continued to do that even after she left Crimea. And I think that legacy is being played out with all of you who are now working under dire conditions. Um, at risk to yourselves, at risk to your cohorts, and yet you're stepping up. And to me, that is so incredibly, um, uh, I don't even know what to say, but it just impresses and inspires me to, to no end. I wish I could be out there on some levels, and on other levels, I know that I wouldn't be much help. 
So this is my way through my show and through you. I hope I can encourage you and inspire you to continue the work you're doing with compassion for your patients and their families at the, at the foundation of it. Thank you. You know, that is so powerful to bring us back to Florence Nightingale, yeah. because you're right, many of us don't reflect and don't think about it. And the work that she did, there are absolutely parallels in the conditions in the work today in a, in a very different way. But yes. thank you for that. And thank you for bringing us back to Florence. We do owe a lot to her in order to kind of kickstart our profession. So thanks for the reminder. And we, where can people find you on social media, Leanne? Okay. Um, I have a new website uh, that is www.oncethenurse.com. And I've just added a new uh, page to it called COVID Corner, which uh, as it, it becomes more fully developed, will have resources for nurses from everything from uh, compassion listening circles, from the um, uh, uh, many of the Holistic Nurses Association. Um, also, some of you may remember or know about uh, Mar Marie um, Manthe. She was the founder of, of um, primary nursing, and she does nursing um, salons, which is similar, but it's an opportunity for you to call and connect with other nurses confidentially and really be able to share what you're dealing with and maybe get support and encouragement from others. So those are the two main things. My um, email address is Leanne at onceanurse.com. Please feel free to send me your stories, your thoughts, what you need going forward to encourage yourself, encourage other nurses. Awesome, thank you so much. And I am Dr. Bonnie Clipper. And remember at Wambi, moments move us. Thank you. <laughs>